Once again, that's ArfOntario.com as I take some awesome pictures of the, uh, the cameras here in the studio. Ooh, cameras taking pictures of cameras. That's happening. Um, we have uh, Michael Sangster, who is the uh, Apple expert and digital camera expert getting uh, ready for a really busy time with Thanksgiving and then uh, Halloween and then Christmas. We want to make sure we take some really good pictures. Absolutely. So uh, all you have to do, Michael, is uh, get a top of the line camera and that guarantees great pictures. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I think that's that, that really is a misconception. It is. Do you see a lot of people who maybe did get that top of the line camera and then you know, a couple months later they come back to you and say, why am I not taking amazing pictures? Well, well, not from us, because we would have sold them the right stuff to begin with. <laughs> I like that. But it does happen all yeah. the time. People get great equipment, they spend a lot of money on it, mm -hmm. but yet they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. So there's a lot of things we can do to take better pictures, to make the holidays one of these occasions where we're getting those family shots that we want. And some of it's just simple things. So Okay, simple things like what? Uh, you know, composition for a lot of people. It sounds really stupid to say that. Um, most of us all have, of course, we may not have a, a camera like this, but a small point and shoot. Sure. But we do have a zoom something to pull things in closer. Yeah. Well, you know, the basic rule has always been to kind of fill the frame, you know. If you have tons of extraneous background, mm -hmm. if I'm taking a family shot, why? It's the family I care about. Let's yeah. zoom in, let's yeah. get them in closer, and actually let's take a good picture, you know, mm -hmm. get them in nice and close. The other thing, and I see this all the time, is people with this little push fanatic. They, they, they think it's like the old school cameras where we had to forcefully push the button to take a picture. Yeah. And that's not the case anymore. You know, we want to lightly squeeze the trigger halfway. And then we continue to push once the focus is engaged. Most cameras will make a little beep noise and we're yeah. ready to go. In so. fact, I think a lot of people don't even realize that uh, most digital cameras now have that feature with the, the half push gets your, your focus. Absolutely. And it's a lot of people, I see them, they're like, I'm not getting good pictures. And I just see them doing this. And yeah. it's, no, no, it's a light squeeze, let it engage, and then take the picture. And so, you know, when we're dealing with a camera like this, um, you know, that's one thing. But, you know, even these, it just that little bit of patience. You know, when I have a built-in zoom, something that maybe is going to zoom out an awful long way, you know, again, I might have this where it's, you know, built-in zoom, really pulling things in. It takes a second for that focus to engage. Sure. And again, if it's not, I'm not going to get a good shot. The other thing that we look at, too, is just the basic setup of our cameras. When we have a lot of these point and shoots or even the SLRs, a lot of them along the side here will have a little diopter correction. So if we do have a standard viewfinder, I may not be seeing it in focus. The camera might be in focus, but if sure. I haven't adjusted that for my own eye, I'm not ready to take that. Okay, you'll picture. have to explain to me what, what exactly that means, diopter. Well, result. when I look through the viewfinder, of course, I wear glasses. Mm -hmm. You're not wearing glasses. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to see slightly different. If I take my glasses off and want to look through that viewfinder to get it up nice and close to my eye, right. I can engage the focus on the camera once, adjust the viewfinder so it's actually in focus for my eye. Okay. Maybe not your eye, that but for sense. my eye, it's in focus. We also have, of course, all our dial settings along the top that allow us to take... Um, you know, different shutter speeds, different mm -hmm. apertures. And for most people, if it's a family function, don't play with those. <laughs> Shoot in auto. I mean, for the most part, auto does work. It works very well. But we always have to take into consideration what we're taking pictures of. Yeah. So, you know, if I'm taking a picture of the kids, you know, worst thing I can do is stand up above them and shoot down. I see it all the time. People right. shoot, I get this oblong view of some kid's head and it's all stretched out down at their level makes a huge difference. Absolutely. That all comes down to, uh, to composition. I want to ask you more about that and, of course, about uh, you know, how technology can help us do that right. SuperiorComputers.ca, Michael Sangster, the Apple trainer and digital camera expert. More with daytime after a quick break. Welcome back to daytime here on Rogers TV. Michael Sangster, digital camera expert from Superior Computer, is joining us. And how cool is this on the uh, the iPad through the digital? Ca I mean, Michael, technology has just gotten so cool, but really advanced. Oh, absolutely. Um, what I'm showing here basically is a new model by Panasonic, and they've actually created an app for our iPad, iPhone, Android devices okay. where we can control and actually wirelessly see what our camera is showing. So if I have the group shot set up, you know, the family shot, we used to always set the timer, run. Now everybody gets in. I could actually set this up on a tripod, 
take my phone, stand in front of it, have the family all get adjusted. I can actually physically zoom in and zoom out. So you can actually adjust the zoom on the Absolutely. camera with the, uh, the app on the iPad that's or the right. iPhone? Or there is a, a little telephoto wide angle position that's actually on here that allows me to actually zoom the lens in, zoom the lens out. Really neat thing. So I mean, for the selfie family that we want to make those adjustments, you know, we can get in the picture, adjust it, snap a shot. So really kind of a fun thing for uh, family members to play with. And again, everybody's got a phone. The phones don't necessarily take the best picture, but now I can set it up yeah. and use my phone to control my camera. Exactly. And what I think, you know, when we were talking about composition before, I think one of the things that impedes people when getting that right shot is, well, I don't want to be all intrusive, you know? Yeah. Filling the frame with my kid, it seems like a great idea until I have to run up into the middle of the birthday party and, and get Absolutely. in there. So if I can do something like this... Well, for a lot of families, I mean, you could set one of these up in the corner of the house, yeah. have it up at, you know, normal height level. I could have my phone I could adjust it, I could zoom in, zoom out. I can take pictures. The other part is, and most people forget this, is video. We all have the capabilities right. to do video with these now. And I mean, most of these point and shoot cameras do high def video. So right directly from the iPad, I can say, I want to put this in video mode and actually shoot video using my camera. Neat. You know, so zoom in, zoom out, be able to do my video, get the family all together. And again, little things like the tripod yeah. tends to be forgotten about. You know, even with a point and shoot camera makes a big difference for stability. Particularly with video. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And the other part though is, you know, when we get those pictures where we have you know, the nice candle setting around the table with the turkey and it's the beautiful glowing look, and people say, how do I get that great shot? You know, turn off the flash, yeah. let the natural light fill in. And again, we use a tripod so we don't get the shake, we don't have the issues. Again, we can set the camera off. We don't have to touch it. It allows that nice long shutter speed to fill in. So these are the types of things we can do, but simple things, tripods, they make a big difference. So I mean, it helps with that kind of composition in a different way. We can also use that what's called the monopod, which is the other thing, which is a single, just basically gives us something to hold on to, and it right. extends full height. These are great for the hikers, the guys who are out, you know, if you're out doing your fall colors, uh, camera mounts right to the top, and again, when I just flip this open yep. and it's got the mount right in there and That's the right. camera just goes right on top. Right on top. And, and you can it. actually put a little ball mount if you want. So if you want to do your vertical shots, you can. Um, but again, when you're out hiking, doing things, if you're in a low light situation, it gives you that little bit of stability. So anytime we have it, okay, it a right little, exactly, a little bit of stability goes a long way. Um, with our cameras, if we're dealing with the larger ones. We always can look at two different lenses will always give us different things we can do. So Absolutely. Lower light capabilities, et cetera. So. And then the, the lenses, I think too, that just opens up so, more, so many more possibilities with that composition too, right? Absolutely. Well, people buy, you know, they go out and buy these cameras. They always come with one lens. Mm -hmm. And I always hear people say, well, I need the telephoto lens. I got to get things pulled in close. Yeah. Telephoto lenses are great for things far away. Sure. Not inside your house. <laughs> you know, where something inside your house would be like something like this one, which is more like a fixed focal length lens. This is a 35 mil lens, and it's basically a, what they call an f1.8. It lets lots of light in. Now the advantage this has versus let's say a standard lens that's on this camera is this lets in so much more light I can handhold it in those really dim lit situations and get pictures that are actually sure. good. Years ago, I still have people buying these cameras and they say things like, my dad used to get such good pictures, you know, and this was 25 years ago. Right. Why don't I get the same pictures? Well, they didn't have zooms. They didn't have to make all these little compromises for light. They still use this style of lens. And that's why we find that even just going back as a secondary lens, having a fixed focal length lens for those inside shots, low light, big difference. Well, and big I think difference. that's where people make the mistake. They think, well, I want a lens that will do as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get a big, a, a real good tight telephoto lens that can also back off enough. I can take just great pictures, In, but that's where they're sacrificing. There, there's compromises. You know, you can get really good big lenses, but then you're going to get a really big price mm -hmm. attached to those. And that's where people sometimes come in the store and they'll say, I can sell you a uh, let's say a 70 to 200 lens, um, very inexpensively for, you know, a couple hundred dollars. And I can also sell you one that's, you know, $2,000. Yeah. There's a difference. So there's, there's gotta be something that's giving. Sometimes just again, going to a fixed focal length lens 
it gives us all the things we couldn't do, we can do. And I mean, mm -hmm. this allows us to do things like blur out the backgrounds. So, you know, I can have it where I have incredible detail in the background or no detail at all. Because of that 1.8 f-stop, it allows me basically to blow out my background. That's great. I mean, so for creative looks, if I'm trying to, again, you know, if I'm focusing on the kid and I don't want all the junk in the background, <laughs> that's it. You know, if I want my turkey and nothing else, that's it. So. Again. I want the selfie picture of just the turkey. Forget That's about right. the family. That's, right. That's the one you're going for. Great thing about Superior Computers is you do have experts like you that are always there to offer advice. Um, you know, you're never just going to walk out the door with a piece of equipment you do not know how no. to use. SuperiorComputers.ca is the website. Or tell you what, you know what? Just stop by, pick this guy's brain, Michael Sangster, at uh, 2200 Warncliffe Road South. Drop by and say hi to Superior Computers at 519-652-6617. Thank you so much for this, Michael. Anytime. And uh, have a happy Thanksgiving. You too. And a happy Halloween and a happy Christmas and happy picture taking. Um, we are uh, right in the middle of the 26th annual Thanksgiving food drive for the London Food Bank. We will be talking to Jane Roy. That's coming up next when daytime returns.